read from uh, Ralph Waldo Emerson's essay, Self Reliance. There is a time in every man's education when he arrives at the conviction that though the blind universe is full of good, no kernel of nourishing corn can come to it but through his own toil bestow on that plot of ground which is given to him to take. The power which resides in him is new in nature, and none but he knows what it is that he can do, nor does he know until he starts. So I met Kit in December in 1971 when he and I both found ourselves somewhat unexpectedly here in Rangeville. Um, for the winter, having been hired by Dick Cross, a wonderful fellow <coughs> who uh, ran in the ski area, uh, to run ski lifts. And so there we were. Um, we shared a house for a couple of winters. We worked together at the mountain for eight winters. And during the first few years, on weekends and during holiday weeks, Kit and I would uh, sing in the bar. Um, it was a bar called the repair shop in the old uh, mountain lodge. And after the lift shut down, we'd find ourselves there and uh, we would uh, sing into the night. And we had such amazing times there. Um, both Kip and I, but all of our friends, just really great, lasting friendships. And um, it was there that I really began to understand the was and how much. And I actually love performing. Um, so, when Kim, and by the way, I only have a few minutes to speak about 50 years of knowing this guy, so I'm going to try to compress this as well as I can. But one thing about Kim, a lot of his old friends remember was that um, he came here with a small bag of worldly possessions, which he called his WP. And in his bag, he had a black cowboy shirt. And this cowboy shirt had embroidered red roses on it, which were quite amazing. And this shirt was quite beautiful. <laughs> it was a classy shirt. And you have to understand that most of us worked and played in the same clothes. And so for Kent to have this gorgeous garment that he put on when we would have a mountain party, we would have it quite often. It was a big deal. And we were always sort of hoping when we'd get together that Kim would arrive with this, this brochure about um, I think what I want to say about it was it, it was his ritual. There was something about it that was not just routine, but it was, a, it was well thought out. And as I've thought about it, you know, Kim was really, I think the kid is being quite artist. And this spoke volumes about Kip, the writer, Kip the man. Um, so what I've come to is I think he was doing his part to create the perfect character in the perfect scene in his perfect moment. And as I'm turning to the pages here, as I'll say, these parties often went made into the And there were often, I mean, there were so many stories that I could tell about it. Um, so I think the shirt was special because Kit was special. And as I got to know him better, it became clear to me that he was different from the rest of us and one of those boys. He didn't talk much about his life before Rachel. And he seemed happy to be moving on from his, into a, a, onto a new chapter uh, from his previous life. But he was clearly very well educated. I always considered him an intellectual. Um, he had a wonderful sense of humor and all of fun. He loved words. He loved playing with words. And his playful mind was always on duty. And that's I'm sure many of you remember that we had to brace ourselves for the next witness. Remember we come along. In the off-season, Kit and I also worked at Hayes Landing uh, for a few years, uh, where we fixed up a lot of patterns kept the place looking nice, and kept an eye on the four children as they roamed around their vehicles in the home. It was beautiful. Um, and 
But it also, um, it was at Haynes Landing Fence Academy that before he lived, the kid really became a serious farmer. Um, there was plenty of room there for him to raise pigs and sheep and beef chickens and laying hens and big gardens. And that's really where it took the farmers.
Kip brought me to Saddleback to build his vision of how our students will be able to gain national learning vision. Kip, as you've heard before, was a lifelong learner and a teacher. Kip came to teach, as we heard from Dave, after working on Bob, he discovered that he could get paid to ski if he had the right skills. Kip is not a board skier, but in short order working with Roger Gage, Kip polished his skills. He started on a long career of ski teaching. And Saddleback's ownership transferred from the park to the partnership of brand new White Birch Honey Motors. Kip was offered the job to run the ski school. Kit had an all-star group of instructors who rotated between Telluride, Colorado, and Saddleback, Maine. Now, the year that that group rotated to Telluride, Kit recruited me from Colorado, Colorado to come here and help him build the ski school. We had a dedicated core, Linda, myself, Kit, and Claudia Comstock, to run the slopes every day, taken by a large group of weekend when I say Kit, myself, and everyone here in this room would say Kit and Linda. Today you're right. They were Kit and Linda, always. They were the best team. They were partners, parents, friends, and teachers. Kit and Linda were committed to the ski area and this community. They smiled every day through every chapter of Saddleback's history. Linda and Kit was so stabilized and day in and day out. Kit was selfless. Kit worked extremely hard. Common theme again. Kit took risks. In the 80s, we were building a new summit terminal for Wells Fargo T Bar in January with sub zero temperatures. It was very, very nasty in the summit of that hour. A heater exploded overnight, burned down the temporary structure to protect the new foundation. In the morning when we all arrived, all we saw was light smoke rising from the sun. We had to lift installation helicopter on site, which we immediately utilized for the recovery and rebuild operation. Kip was one of the first to jump in and work on this project. No hesitation, no second thought. Kip grabbed that, door to that open helicopter, jumped in, and when they went to the sun. And being a resourceful group, which we learned from Tate and his uh, management crew back in New York, did, we used that helicopter to air that there are three huge hedgerow snow pans up the mountain to place it in hard to reach terrain. Those were the most expensive snow gun placements in the history of Saturday night. <laughs> <laughs> and we definitely got a chuckle about that. Kim was all in the South back. His heart swelled whenever a Ford former student would come up and thank him for the miles and miles they'd ski together. Kim was proud of the recognition that his instructors received for their success through their students. Kim was really proud that he brought national certification to the ski school in South Africa. Kim, we love you. When there we share your sorrow and loss, we stand in awe of the incredible relationship that you have. We are so lucky that we chose it is an honor to be a part of this celebration of life, and I am amazed at the women and kids' family. The later love shines so brightly to make this wish come true for Kit. The beauty of your love, Linda, and faith in this man is my That is inspired by When Linda asked me to speak to Kit as a farmer, the lessons harvested from my time working at First Farm came flooding back, and I realized they never really left. They've been with me the whole time. So I went to take a drive with me, maybe close your eyes, up to First Farm on a perfect July day of today, maybe 20 years ago, when I was in high school and these farm gals were on a break from college, drive up that dirt road and picture on your road a vibrant built of asparagus, potatoes, salad greens, and strawberries. 
Okay, it just tastes so like strawberry. Draw it a little further up on the left, and you'll witness the expressionist painting of Linda's flower bed, whose audacious tango of color was upstaged only by Kit and Linda's warm smiles. Kit and Linda work beautifully together like that, each having their own masterpieces, the flowers, the bed, the vitamins, the story of the community. The farm is a puzzle with each of their gifts at the center, an example of true love and interaction. And now, arrive at the shop, an art museum, celebrating each gift of the harvest and letting people experience the beauty of rudely shaped carrots, of foods full of nourishment, the kind of nourishment that food is meant to have, with a little dirt still in the roots, something that many of us didn't even know we were missing. And there we're taking them in the middle of it all, managing this phenomenal vision that they created together and making it all look easy. Now, grab a kohlrabi, a veg that I had never met until I went to first farm, and listen to the story that Kit told me and all of those lucky enough to study with him as they were pulling the beans and doing the potatoes on first farm. Chapter one. It ain't. Kit in a torrential downpour, striding on the longest legs you could ever imagine, toward a soppy, wet kid eating strawberries with chattering teeth. And he didn't say, go home, it's raining. He also didn't say, talk it up. He just crouched down for a little bit, asked his daughter life, share a couple stories, pop a strawberry in his mouth, and then stride off to keep tending the fields. What I learned about that was that coaxing food from the earth, or doing anything that's worth your life, especially without shortcuts, takes incredible discipline. But when done with love, it is no good. It takes so much effort every single day, but Kit just did it with ease. It was a kind of relationship for him, a kind of play worth going through, even on the heaviest of days. And this brings me to the next chapter, make it fun. Can't you just hear Kit laughing? I can see him just throwing his head back and letting out this deep shout of joy. Or just whistling with his arms up to his elbows in brown dirt, standing in deep in a potato plant. And he never said, dig up the potatoes. He looked at us and he was going to magic trick. And then he said, do And he showed us how to sink the pitchfork into the black dirt. And then when the potatoes tumbled out, he would just with such delight, as if he really found gold, or as if this were the first time he'd ever done potatoes. And again, I saw, because of love, he made a chore into a moment of happiness, of discovery and celebration. And because he shared that approach with us, he taught us that we can make our chores in the golden moments, too. Chapter 3, Know Your Weeds. <laughs> When you get into the shop and pick your gorgeous bouquet of rainbow charm, you didn't have to think about the fact that one of the most unrelenting parts of charming that gift of the earth was weeds, bugs, you know, incidentals. But it is. When I worked at first farm, I literally dreamed about weeds. <laughs> but Kit taught us the importance of getting out the roots and where to throw the really bad ones so they didn't contaminate the compost. But he also draws which weeds to leave. I never knew that clover replenishes the nitrogen in the soil. His studious attention to the role that everything played in his garden taught us that it is important to know which weeds to keep and for what. Not to miss the good things that can show up in his environment. So in summer, kids taught us to be patient you have faith that when you water it will grow, and if it doesn't, dig it up and plant it somewhere else. <laughs> and don't give up. Be disciplined, devoted to the whole circle of things, and life will sprout and grow and fruit and die and nourish and spread all over. He taught us to find a way to love each day, 
even when you're bone tired or you've dug potatoes 10,000 times before, find a way to uncover the simplest things like they are gold and smile and share them with the people you love. Kit lived a life with so many gifts that he created and that he accepted from the earth and from this community. And he shared them with us with such joy and devotion that we all feel compelled to come here today and celebrate it. Because even now, his lessons are part of us. So next time you enjoy the fruits of your garden, or anything that finds its way into your life that was meant to be love, think of Kit laughing in the rain and treasure that thing. Reading the Nativity story from the King James Version of Luke's Gospel, 
have ever so many more of friends. Kid telling me that when he ran, he would recite the 23rd Psalm and pray for those whose trials were weighing heavily upon his heart. I started to do the same when I walk, and I would invite him to do as well. And as others have said, Kid loved music, and we shared the love with him when he like a river. He had a beautiful voice and loved to sing. My voice, not so much. But together, we would sing the longer line of the hymn's chorus, and I would forever hear him singing. You can know the chorus. like a Thank you. 
Please be with me in a spirit of prayer. Merciful God, we thank you for your word. It's a lamp to our feet, a light for our path. We thank you especially that in the night of our grief and in the shadows of our sorrow, we are not left to ourselves. We have the light of your promises to sustain and to comfort us. By your Holy Spirit, lead us in faithfulness all our days. And when we have served you in our generation, may we be gathered with those who have gone before, having the testimony of a good conscience in the communion of your Holy Church, in the confidence of a certain faith, in the comfort of a saving hope, in favor with you, our God, and in perfect peace with the world. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer. Amen. And now, into your hands, O oh merciful Savior, we commend your servant, Carl Kit Casper. Acknowledge, we humbly pray, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, and a son of your own redeeming. Receive him into the arms of your mercy and into the blessed rest of everlasting peace and into the company of the saints in light. God of all people and times, grant the living grace to the departed rest and to the wider community peace and compassion to all who call on you everlasting Give us light to guide us on our way, courage to support us, and your blessing now and forevermore. Amen. Amen.